Here we're doing a bilobe transposition flap for a Mohs defect. The patient had a 17 by 12 millimeter defect of her left nose. So we've designed a bilobe transposition flap. The skin has been injected. She's under local anesthesia. We begin by excising the staining contains deformity within the alar crease. There's always a staining contains deformity with this flap that's triangular and at the base of the rotation of the flap. Next, what I'll do is uh, basically create a universal depth of the defect, and I'll excise the remaining muscle all the way down to cartilage, so we have a, a, a depth that's consistent throughout the defect. Next, we'll incise the first lobe, and I always raise these flaps in a subfascial plane, so I'm going through skin, subcutaneous fat, and also the muscle and we'll elevate this with cautery in a subfascial plane. It's a pretty easy plane, shouldn't be much bleeding. And I find that when I elevate in this plane, you get better movement with less tension, and you can always thin the flap after you've raised it in this plane. Again, the bilobe transposition flap is moving two separate lobes through 45 degrees for a total movement of a 90 degrees. Here we are elevating the second lobe, which is also has a standing continuous deformity at its superior aspect that we usually raise uh, with the second lobe. So again, elevating in a subfascial plane, there's always a little bit more bleeding at the nasal side wall. Once we get down under that layer, we can uh, elevate this all the way in that same plane out to the ascending process of the maxilla and divide some of these uh, tight attachments to the periosteum and that really frees the flap up and allows it to move through its full mobility. Once we've elevated the flap and dried everything up, now we'll undermine the rest of the nose and this is a very easy dissection to do in a subfascial plane with cautery. I'll basically elevate the dorsum and the nasal tip uh, well past the uh, midline that uh, helps us close the primary defect. So this is a, a 4 monocryl on a PS2 needle. We're closing the donor site for the first, I'm sorry, the second lobe first. I usually put a couple of sutures in here which uh, helps hold everything in place. And my assistant is just holding the flap in position while I close the donor site defect from the second lobe. Then I'll uh, set the first lobe by first trimming a little bit of uh, excess thickness of the flap. I just sort of eyeball the thickness and lay it into the defect, uh, trying to get the, uh, the, the depth to match the uh, thickness of the flap. So again, just doing our deep dermal closure. And once the Once the lobes have been uh, set, it's a fairly straightforward procedure from here out, just doing your deep sutures, uh, checking the flap, making sure that um, you're not misaligning any of the skin edges, you're not over or under advancing any of the lobes, not putting too much tension on anything, uh, very important for all of the healing process. So several deep sutures to secure the position of the first lobe, which will allow us to evert the skin edges with uh, no tension um, with our second layer. So once I've finished uh, insetting the first lobe, I'll then trim the excess of the second lobe. I try to make the, the second lobe um, with sort of right angles rather than rounded edges. This leads to less trap dooring and I think helps irregularize the scar a little bit as well. So I always trim the second lobe. Uh, it, it always ends up being more of a rectangular shape rather than a, a rounded shape like the first lobe typically is.
So here we are with a 5.0 proline on a PS2 needle. Closing the donor site from the second lobe, I'll typically just do a uh, simple running suture. Again, all of the tension has been uh, alleviated by the movement of the flap <clears throat> and with the deep dermal sutures holding everything in place. Uh, this layer really is just about getting the skin edges to evert um, for proper healing. I'll typically also do a running suture across the straight edge that forms at the bottom of the first lobe and uh, the closure of the standing continuous deformity. It's a usually a nice straight line, so a running stitch is appropriate here. Then we'll do interrupted sutures to evert the edges of the first lobe and second lobe. I have patients clean the incision a couple of times a day and apply Aquaphor Vaseline, just some non-medicated ointment. I don't think any sort of antibiotic ointment is necessary. I typically don't put them on any oral antibiotics and I don't use any pressure dressings. Um, I feel like um, it, they, they have their downsides. Uh, there's potential for problems, and, and I don't feel like they're really, really a necessary part of the healing process. So we're just finishing up our sutures here and um, making sure all of the edges are reverted, and the patient gets instructions, and um, we'll see her back in about a week, and we'll remove the proline sutures.